Welcome to the channel. We are looking at Games Workshop's pre-order release for 6th of June 2020. And this week we have a lot of Aeronautica Imperialis releases. Um, they're bringing in the Tau aircast into the game. So there's a whole bunch of new flyer models for Tau, some new ones for the Imperial Navy. So let's have a look into it. So this campaign um, for Aeronautica is called Skies of Fire. So we do get a whole bunch of models. So we get 10 models in this kit. Um, so we've got some Tau flyers. Off the top of my head, I've got no idea what they're called, um, but we do actually have the individual releases later. So we'll be able to come back to that. So the Tau flyers are very sleek, very Manta Ray style. Then you have the new Imperial fighters um, doing their Imperial thing. So they're all really cool. And then we have some smaller Tau ones, which are nice. Some more sleeker Imperial ones. Um, so $150 Australian. I'll make sure I do put the prices up for US and UK this time around. But these, I really do like the Aeronautica models. And it does give me hope for a bit of Epic 40,000 in the future. But we'll see. Um, you also get a whole bunch of transfers, a whole bunch of tokens. So as far as I'm aware, this release is a full game. That's what I'm aware of. Um, yeah, so it has the full Aeronautica Imperialis game rules, which is very cool. And it has uh, two maps. It's actually two kind of large maps. I don't actually know how big they are. Let me find how big they are. They are um, double-sided game board. Doesn't say how big they are. I'm just scanning the page. But I think in, they also release these individually, so we will have a look at that as well. So, yeah, and here we go. We've got the sprues here. So a lot of detail, a lot of sticking on guns and a few extra bits and pieces. There's more of the towel. And we also have some imperial ones, which is kind of nice. So really nice sprues there. And a lot of deal, detail already comes um, baked in, so they should be pretty quick to put together. Then individually, you can buy the Tau Aircast Barracuda Fighters, which are the little boys. So $74. I think you get three of them in this pack, so they're kind of cool. Again, very sleek Tau design. Um, transfer sheet, which is nice. And the same sprues again, so 74 for those. And you get three of those. So then we also have the Tiger Shark Fighter Bomber. So two of those for $74. And we've already had a look at those, but let's just quickly skim through to see what else we've got. Some more close-up pictures. So it looks very nice and sleek. Then we also have $74 for the two boards. So these are the two boards that come out in the box set. So there we go. It's three by three. Three foot by three foot. So they're not small boards. I'm just looking around at something of equivalent size. Um, they take up a fair bit of room, but that's okay. So it looks like that you would get the boards and a whole bunch of fighters in the $150 pack. Let me just double check that. Let's go back to the main one. So yeah, so we've got these two here, which are 74 Australian. These three, which are 74 Australian. The two boards, which is 74 Australians. I don't remember. Yeah, 74 and so these two would, two would be 74, another 74. So buying the Aeronautica Imperialis Skies of Fire box set, you are going to be saving a ton of money. So even just buying the Tau set, you're only really getting a third of the, the value. So the um, two Tiger Sharks and three Barracudas, that would be 100 and something... Let's just round it up to 150. It's like 70, 140 something. I'm not very good at maths. So so you really are getting a lot of value in that set. Um, and then we got, so we've looked at these two already, I think. Oh no, they're variations. So then we've got the Tiger Shark AX-10 Fighter Bombers again. So there's even more variation there. And I believe they, they're the ones that don't come in the box set. Is that correct? Yeah, these are different ones. So these are variations. They've got some bigger guns on there far as I can tell. I'm really not all that up on Aeronautica Imperialis or the Flyers of 40k, but I'm really just more interested in the models, to be honest. Um, so here we have the Imperial Navy Lightning Fighters. So you actually get six in this kit. Is that correct? So yeah, six. That's really cool. 
also, and I actually really like the design of these. So you get six of these, which are kind of cool. Oh, let's go back to have a look, some close up looks. Yeah, so these are the ones that come in the box, but it looks like you only get three in the main um, Skies of Fire box set and some really nice transfer sheets, which let's be honest, these transfer sheets will probably be really good for just normal 28 mil, 40K. You've got some Imperial Eagles. Um, you could probably cut these up to get the wings off there as well, which are really nice. A few other bits and pieces. I think that's actually really cool. So I think for six models for 74, I think that's pretty good value there. And then we have the Valkyrie. So you get four of these. Again, $74 Australian. That's actually really cool. I like it. I think this game, if you already have chosen your Air Force, I guess it's called Air Force, um, and you're going Imperials, you don't have to buy the new box set. You can be like, oh, I'm going to go pick up a whole bunch of these for 74 bucks, Or even cheaper at a local game store because they do like 10 to 15% off. I've seen some stores also do 20% off. So you've got that going as well. And here again, we've got some really nice um, items on the transfer sheet. So again, I'd love to get hold of some of these transfer sheets. I think that's really cool. And then we have the sprue for these. And that's really nice. So you get four in the box. Very, very nice. So then we have the campaign book for 58. Let's have a look through some of the pages. So this is 96 pages. Um, and it gives you, probably give you some rules. Let's actually make that a bit bigger so we can see it. So it's got actually rules for the game. So it's kind of cool. So it's, if you've already got the original box set or one of the original box sets, um, you can buy this book. It's got some extra rules for the new Astra Militarum, the new Imperial Navy, and the Tau Aircast. So I think that's kind of cool. I do like it. It's sort of the... F I think GW have really come ahead in recent years about how to release or have a release schedule for games and how people can get access to the games. When previously it was like, here's a box set or here's a rule book. This is what you do. It seems to me with... Aeronautica Imperialis, they're really looking at how people can access the game. So they'll re-release a box set, I guess, which has everything you need to play. But if you buy it and you've already got the original box set or another box set, you get a ton of extra models, um, extra tokens, extra boards for, let's be honest, really good value. Like, I can't get over how good the value is for this $150. Like, again, the mats themselves are 74. These two are 74. These three are 74. These two, I think you get, if I'm correct, you get four of these in the box alone and then three, six of these in the box alone. So still, it's still really good value. If you just want to get some Tau Fighters, you've got that. And then you get bonus boards and some Imperial stuff that you can pass off to other people. So that's really cool. So what else have we got? And then we have the aircraft and aces cards. I don't know, because I don't play the game, I don't really know exactly how these work, but I'm assuming that they're pretty, pretty useful for you. $43 for cards. has 86 cards. I'm always dubious about the price for um, cards and those kind of ancillary bits and pieces that GW releases. I think it's a little bit overpriced, but it's a convenience factor. And for the convenience factor, I do like it. I just don't want to pay almost $50. Let's round it up to $50 for a pack of cards. And again, we have the Imperial one. So for Astra Militarum and Imperial Navy, again, 85 cards. We're going to have a skim through. So we've got some pilots, some different flyers. So there we go. Now, I'm more excited about the dice, to be honest. I don't know why. I really do like dice. Um... $28 for a pack of eight D6s. They look pretty. They're dice. What can you say? <laughs> so we've got the Tau Aircast one, and then we have the Imperial Navy one, which is kind of like this camo green and olive color, which is really nice. I actually like these ones. And also I like them because they do have the symbols on them, which is kind of cool. We also have one book this week, Ghoul Slayer, which is the first expedition or novel of Gore-Tec. Godrex, sorry, um, set in the mortal realms. So we have, say it's full first, it's 
It's Gotrek's first full-length novel in the mortal realms, and it pits him against the horrors of the realm of death as he seeks almighty Nagash to try and punch him in the face. So there you go. That's sort of all the new releases this week. Very much um, Aeronautica Imperialis. And I seriously can't get over the value of this compared to buying them individually. And like I said, I think that that is very much a focus on GW really looking at how to release product lines. Um, you do you have seen a little bit with, I think Kill Team did it. Uh, what else did it? Warcry has done it where you can buy the cards separately. You can buy the rule book separately. You don't have to buy into spending a whole bunch of money all at once to get into the game. Or if you already have the game, when they do re- new releases like Skies of Fire, you can buy just some tower models if that's what you want. But again, 150 bucks for this box set. I think that's it's fairly good value when you compare it to the previous prices. And one thing I wanted to talk about in this video is my hopes now that Aeronautica Imperialis seems to have a bit of support from GW. There's a whole bunch of flyers out there. There's other races like they haven't done Elder. They haven't done any Chaos or Demon stuff yet. Um, a few Orcs, but there's definitely some more Orc stuff they could release. It gives me hope that one day, hopefully, there will be an epic 40k release. We are sort of in this strange spot where we have um, Aeronautica Imperialis with a whole bunch of flyers. We have a whole bunch of knights and titans released at the same scale. And my reason to think that there may be a new release coming up at some point, possibly in the next two years, is the... 40k Apocalypse rules, which was, let's be honest, that was really expensive to get into. So Apocalypse was $165 Australian for some rules, some tokens, a bunch of dice, and a whole bunch of cards. That was very expensive to get into just for rules. Um, and then you also needed to have like the, we didn't need them, but it definitely helped to have the little movement trays as well. And again, not too cheap, but it is what it is. I always thought that that price point is very odd. Um, it is in line with other um, rule sets such as Conquest. I think it was released before Apocalypse and it was around the same amount. But this seemed to me it was almost like a beta test for new Epic 40k rules just to see how people play it. And that's just the feeling I got when I looked at it. It plays similar from what I recall to old Epic 40k, um, slightly tweaked rule set, but you combine this system at a very pricey point because it wasn't something they were going to support and I never thought it was something that was like a rule set. It would have been strange that they actually released it like this. I'm surprised they didn't just release it as a just a book. Um, and then you have the Titans and Knights and now some whole bunch of flyers at a v- same scale it wouldn't take much for them to develop a bit more, like expand those ranges, add some tanks and add some infantry. And then we've got, we've already basically got the rules in Apocalypse. Now we have Epic 40K in 2020 or 2021. I don't think it'll be this year. I don't think it will be next year now that they've just, I haven't even released Ninth edition yet, but I think it's something definitely to look out for in the future. That's just my thoughts and my conspiracy theories, but you know, could be wrong. (laughs) Who knows? Um, Went on a little bit of a rant there, but it's something that's been on my mind for a while. And every time GW releases some new um, smaller scale miniatures, I'm like, ooh, ooh, I'm getting that epic 40k itch. So there we go. All the releases for this week. So until next time, I'll catch you later.